and welcome to the primary storyline, a video series about post-production as it relates to Final Cut Pro 10, Motion, and Compressor. My name is Andrew Gormley, and I will be your host. In this episode, we'll be working on something rather cool, recreating a dolly zoom effect in both Final Cut Pro 10 and Motion, but I think we'll ultimately be more satisfied with the final product of the latter because, as its name suggests, Motion is built for that sort of thing. Before we get started, I'd like to show you a few quick examples of what a dolly zoom actually is. I'm certain you've seen this technique before, even if you didn't know the name. Essentially, what you need is a camera equipped with a zoom lens and a dolly. You dolly the camera in and zoom out on the lens at approximately the same speed. The effect is pretty remarkable for things like exaggerating distance, since the background compression changes at different zoom lengths. With that in mind, this is also the first episode where I'm providing the same sample footage for you to follow along. Just pause the video, visit the link on the screen to get a copy for yourself, and then start the video back up again. It's a 4K ProRes LT file that weighs in at around 700 megabytes, so you might want to grab a coffee or a sandwich and I'll wait. So now that you have the file, let's open up Final Cut Pro 10 and get started. I'm going to create a new event called Dolly Zoom. And I do want to create a new project. I also want to make sure that I'm using the custom settings as seen here and not the automatic settings, which you might see like this. If you are seeing this, just press Use Custom Settings. The key to this effect is using 4K footage on a 1080p timeline so we can scale and move things around without losing our quality. So with these custom settings open, make sure that your video format is 1080p and that the frame rate is 2398, which will match our clip, and then press OK. I'm going to select the Dolly Zoom event, name the project Dolly Zoom, and then import our clip, which I have right here. So just a quick sanity check, what you want to do is click on your project right here, and over in the inspector, make sure that it's 1920 by 1080 and then do the same thing for the clip and make sure that the information says that it's 4K, which it is. With this in place, just press E to edit it down to your timeline. And I'm going to press Shift Z to get everything to fit into view. The first thing I'll do is trim the video up so that we start with the camera already in motion and end before it stops. So skimming around here, I could see that maybe if we cut off right out here at about two seconds in, and maybe right here around 11 seconds. So there's our move right there. And now that we have this in place, I'm just going to select the clip, press Command C, and then Command V to duplicate it. This way we have a really nice before and after. Now on this second clip, the first thing we wanna do is change the spatial conform down here to none. This tells Final Cut we want to utilize the 4K clip at its native resolution on our 1080p timeline. The dolly zoom works best when our subject is dead center. So what I'm going to do is actually use the position tool here and move it around until we get something that looks pretty good. Maybe like right about there. Great. So once this is done, we want to set position and scaling keyframes on the first frame of our clip. So with the clip selected anywhere, all you have to do is press the up arrow on your keyboard to jump to the first frame. And over here in our inspector, we'll press this button right here to set a position keyframe, and we'll press this button right here to set a scale all keyframe. Then we'll press the down arrow on our keyboard to move to the end of the clip, select it again, and then set a keyframe here and here. Now on this last frame, we want to scale down our clip to just a little more than 50%. So if I just type in maybe 58%, uh, maybe 55 will work. Okay. And again, we want to make sure that this is as centered as possible. So I'm going to drag the Y value here. And maybe right about there looks pretty good. In a perfect world, if your subject was always dead center of the frame, you could scale all the way down to 50%. But we need a little bit of that extra room for these position adjustments. So with that done, let's render this right now and then play it back. 
Let's press Shift Z to fit everything into view, and then we'll play the clips back to back. That looks pretty great. Notice how the subject stays in essentially the same space, while it appears as though the background gets further away. If you scrub over the clip, this is very pronounced. That's kind of the dolly zoom effect in action right there. This works, this is great. A lot of people would be impressed with this, but I think that there is a better way to do it in motion. So let's check that out right now. So the first thing you wanna do obviously is open motion and you'll have the project browser appear just like this. Make sure that Motion Project is selected, and over at the preset, choose Broadcast HD 1080. Under the frame rate, we want to drop that down and choose 2398, which matches our clip. And then you want to make sure that the duration is set to 11 seconds, because that's essentially what we trimmed off in the Final Cut project. Once all that's done, press Open. The first thing to do is press Command-I on your keyboard and navigate to import the clip. I have it right here, so I'm just going to select it and press import. It'll get added to the layers pane here and on the timeline down here. Again, I remember in Final Cut that we took the first two seconds off, so I'm going to move right here and then press I on my keyboard. I can move the clip back to the very beginning, and then I'm going to move the playhead to the very end and press O to set my out. So here's our clip, essentially the same exact thing we had in Final Cut Pro. Now with the clip selected, if you go up to the inspector here, and then properties, you have essentially all of the controls that we have from Final Cut Pro. We could recreate the movement exactly like we did, but then we would get the same exact result. We want something better, and Motion offers that via behaviors. There are probably five ways to accomplish this in Motion, but since we need to move on the Y and Z axis, I'm going to select Motion Path by going to Behaviors, Basic Motion, Motion Path. You can see by default, we have a movement applied that slides our entire clip over to the right, which is not what we want. So now it's just a matter of changing some of these parameters. In the inspector area, you'll see that we're currently under behaviors right now. Where we wanna focus our attention is in this area for the control points. They are listed in X, Y, and Z order. Point one is our starting position, and point two is our ending position. And right now I can tell that I don't want to move in an X position at all. So I can click on this number and then just zero it out. I also know that we want to center the subject at the beginning. So I can use the Y value here to drag and get him kind of where I want him to be. Maybe right about there. Here's where motion has the edge over Final Cut. At this point, we can call up the rulers by pressing Command Shift R on our keyboard and then we can actually drag out guidelines so we know exactly where we want our figure to stay. So if I click anywhere in the ruler and drag, we get these cool guides that we can use to mark his head and his feet. And then from the left-hand side, we can do the same thing to mark kind of the edges. And now we know that our final frame should have our figure placed pretty much in this area. So just like we did in Final Cut, we wanna move our playhead to the out point and then set our values. It's just a matter of adjusting the Z and the Y values right here. So we'll get him to about this spot and we can adjust him up. I can see a little bit more room here. That looks pretty great. Now, after all this, we're still working in what you would call a linear move, just like we built in Final Cut, with the numbers ramping up an equal amount over time from point A to point B. If we swing back over to the inspector and focus on this speed dropdown, we can actually open this up and see that we have several options to choose from. I'm not going to go through all these, but I will link to what they do in the notes underneath this video. The one we wanna select is natural, which changes the velocity based on the actual motion path. Ours is a pretty subtle path, but it should have something of an effect. Once all this is done, press command forward slash on your keyboard to remove all of the guides and rulers and then press Command R to do a RAM preview. Then simply press the space bar to play it back.
it looks glorious. Thank you for watching. If you found it useful, please give it a good rating on iTunes or subscribe on YouTube as it will help others find and join our merry band of misfits. Or don't. No harm, no foul. If you have any questions or have an idea of something you'd like to see covered, you can reach out via the website at theprimarystoryline.com or email theprimarystoryline at gmail.com. You can also find and discuss things with me on Twitter at darkdriving. I will see you all on the next episode of The Primary Storyline. Make something epic.